Go find the load content method. Use the method selector. Place your cursor after the sprite batch call. Add a new line and type the following. Camera view matrix equals matrix dot create look at camera position camera look at vector three dot up you've just created your first matrix this method is a helper method that creates the appropriate matrix that represents how a camera views a scene take a look at the arguments the first two are the camera position and the camera look at. The third argument represents an up vector, which way is up in our 3D universe. There's a helper method for that too, called vector3.up. Very handy. This matrix now defines where our camera is and what it's looking at. This kind of matrix is called a view matrix. We need a view matrix to properly draw our scene. There's another matrix that we declared up top that we haven't initialized yet. We're going to do that now. Another new line and add the following. Camera projection matrix equals matrix dot create perspective field of view. Math helper dot two radians 45.0 F comma graphics dot graphics device dot viewport dot aspect ratio comma 1.0 f comma 10,000.0 f now this is a big method let's go through it this is another helper method that creates a different kind of matrix called a projection matrix this defines the parameters necessary to take the 3D objects that the camera, as defined by the view matrix, sees, and turn them into 2D images that draw on your screen. To do that, we first need a field of view, in radians. How wide does this camera see? Using the math helper dot two radians method, we state that we want a field of view of 45 degrees, converted to radians. The second argument is something called aspect ratio. This is how wide or tall the finished 2D image on our screen should be. Think about a TV, wider than it is tall. We need to know how wide and how tall, or the image won't come out right. Aspect ratio, as the name implies, is expressed as a ratio between width and height. This is already available to us in the graphics device viewport class. The last two arguments specify the near and far clipping planes in world units. Anything that's too close to the camera or too far away disappears. To define how close is too close, use the near clipping plane number. We have it set to one unit. To define how far is too far, use the far clipping plane number. We have that set to 10,000. Great. We have these matrices set up and ready to go. We're on the way toward drawing our first object. Next step, the actual drawing method. If you'd like to learn more about the differences between 2D and 3D, click More Details for this step. Otherwise, if you're ready to move on, click the next step.